Hi, I'm Matty, and welcome to another episode of our Archive Dive. This week, we're going to talk about another one of my favourite decades, uh, and that's the 1940s. It's really important to put um, the 40s into perspective, um, and realistically, everything really, uh, for the most part, centres around the wartime. Um, in 1941, um, the UK ended up in um, rationing for clothing. Um, uh, and they, the government did this great thing called CC41, which stood for Civilian Clothing 41. And what that meant is that it kind of offered um, uh, a quality level for clothing to make sure that things would last in a way that really needed to, um, because uh, we really weren't, you know, if we wanted to go out and buy another suit, we couldn't. We had, uh, we had rationing books and coupons to make sure that we could only get X and X, I think it was, uh, you know, two suits per year. For a guy which is unbelievable um, no matter how much money you had so that was great because it really leveled kind of like across <coughs> across the classes um, but in contrast to that the US wasn't in rationing so what happened was there was this really incredible um, disparity really um, between our uh, British uh, women and their American cousins and there's a little bit of jealousy uh, between the two because obviously <coughs> they kind of looked at, again Hollywood was still thriving it was getting bigger and bigger and bigger uh, and they could afford uh, and they were allowed to, to purchase these incredible gowns so what we're going to do is we're going to take you through a little bit of history um, so we're going to start with suits so <coughs> in terms of the shape from the 30s obviously we had um, we, we said it was a little bit fussier up top. Now, as we go into the um, 40s, we see a real, real strong um, shapes for women's suiting. Um, and for the most part, it's all about the shoulders. So the shoulders are absolutely huge. So when we look at how much padding there is in here uh, and, the, and the weight that's in those shoulders, so what it basically meant was we had the really wide shoulders and a really nipped waist. Um, and it was just, it was quite a, quite a masculine shape really and, and quite fitting because for the most part the women were still doing guys' jobs uh, throughout the war. So that also came through into, um, into women's wear. Um, the suits were just absolutely fantastic. The tailoring for me is huge. You had these incredible, not only do we have huge shoulders, again you can feel the amount of padding in there is just immense. Um, all beautifully made inside um, but these huge lapels are just oh dreamy and again you'll see these in uh you'll see these in the 70s with people like jagger and uh bowie uh, they were wearing these jackets they were wearing 40s jackets all the way through uh, and then uh we can talk about tommy nutter who was pretty special in the 70s but yeah <clears throat> these um these shapes really really persisted um through decades but it was great. What was really important about suits was the fact for women, especially during rationing, was that we could buy two suits and have four outfits. So the ability to shop and change uh, and switch things up was really, really important uh, because it just meant that um, during the dreariness of the war sometimes, uh, it meant that we just had a bit, uh, the ladies had a little bit more options. Uh, in the wardrobe, uh, some more really gorgeous suits here, um, especially that one. Again, you've got these absolutely beautiful huge enormous collars which again was mirrored in menswear um, and then uh, that's a bit more 50s that's a bit late but uh, what was great was the fact that because although we were kind of rationing fabrics things like decoration weren't rationed so it was really great so quite a lot of the time you'll see incredible 40 suits but you'll see them with really beautiful kind of all this work here this um, this overlay is called soutache um, and then you've got all this incredible beading and again, uh, these really beautiful patch pockets um, and really stunning um, shaping. Um, and again, big short paddy shoulders. So it was really great. So even though, um, and, th and this is what's really important, is that even though the actual fabric itself, uh, for the most part, was uh, rationed, there were always ways that women could kind of circumvent that. And we see that a lot when we see... Um, Things like crocodile shoes and snakeskin shoes, they were really massive because it, you know, they weren't under rationing. Um, so again, not to everybody's taste, but they made the best of a bad situation. Um, one of my favorite things, I collect a lot of sailor wear and naval wear, especially from the 40s. Uh, and one thing that I really wanted to uh, pull out, which is really exciting for me, um, is um, some sailor stuff during the 40s, because obviously the Navy was really important 
during the 40s, out on both sides. And um, both sides of the wall. Uh, but what was great was the fact that, so this was this would have been um, kind of like common garden, uh, sailor top. Uh, but in every port, um, there was an embroiderer or an embroideress. Uh, and what that meant was the fact that people could nip in there um, whilst they were kind of on shore leave uh, and pop in and get something embroidered. And what quite often, and it's really exciting, so what happens sometimes if you turn these tops inside out, you just see the most beautiful detailing. So you see these incredible, incredible kind of chain, hand chain stitched. Um, also, I've seen these in the past and they'll have like a little heart um, with the sweetheart's name on it. Um, and it's a really great way because, um, you know, kind of keeping their loved ones close to them. And you can put little bits and bobs in there as well. Um, so that was really exciting. Um, what was good, what was really interesting was the fact that kind of that naval thing uh, and the sailor thing kind of also crossed over into women's wear, which is we start to see a lot more bibs um, in a lot of clothing. So this, for example, is absolutely gorgeous and a silk satin top. But again, we've got this incredible bib. Um, it kind of came through from the, it was big in the 20s as well, but we still started to see that back again in the 30s and in the 40s uh, because uh, because of just those little influences we were seeing it just in daily life. Um, I've got, I've taken this out. This is a stunning, stunning dress. Um, but what's really interesting, and the reason I've pulled it out is because of the zip front. So it's quite unique that um, there is a zip front, and not this one in particular, but um, it just highlights uh, a really great feature of a lot of 40s dresses, especially in the UK. Uh, they would have, just for practicality purposes, um, you know, these kind of like house coats were really, really beautiful. Uh, but what it meant was when these... Uh, the sirens went for the air raids uh, it meant that you could kind of quickly zip out of them pull your trousers on uh, and head into the Anderson shelter um, so <clears throat> you'll see quite a lot of front zip things um, through the 40s and this as well again we've kind of like you know we've got this uh, got this waist again these collars are fantastic um, but again kind of zip fronted and what I really like about this and I kind of pulled it out is that <clears throat> we um, although Although, you know, kind of rationing uh, was still going on, we, st we had this really great um, printing uh, revolution, really, in terms of uh, designs and prints. And I think for a lot of people, kind of 40s was really, uh, th what they see in their mind is these really great tea dresses. And there were some really, really beautiful things. But um, So we've got all these really, really exciting prints. And what they did is they just gave a little bit of brightness to people's day. Because, uh, you know, there wasn't always... Uh, then, so uh, this is really gorgeous. Um, a, some a real kind of rise of really f stunning floral prints. I end I included this one because um, it's got a peplum. So the peplum kind of like started in the forties, really, for the most part, because um, you know we kind of, in contrast to that kind of fluid thirties line, uh, we've got this kind of like it's a lot busier during the waist. <clears throat> um, designers at the time. Uh, really kind of took, they had to, just because of, you know, kind of rationing and all the rest of it. But they had to think about new ways and really new creative ways uh, of making uh, of making fabrics because, again, it's very short. Um, so we've got all this really beautiful gathering. So it was really important. And these, um, and these, these are called swags. And you'll see them uh, through a lot of 40s wear, like this little stunner. Um, so, you know, we see a lot more fussiness going on at the waist. Um, these really gorgeous kind of like pleated swags uh, and this really gorgeous copper. Um, so as we get, so as you get through the 40s um, and out of rationing, what was really interesting was, so Dior started his new look in the late 40s um, to much consternation because uh, quite a lot of the, uh, quite a lot of the, um, UK and British women were still uh, in uh, in rationing um, and then when Dior came along and kind of outlined all these huge uh, incredible shapes like really really radical huge um, use of huge skirts, nipped waists uh, but more fabric than anybody had seen in a long long time 
Um, so it was really interesting um, because um, what we start to see then as, um, as rationing starts to fade in the late 40s, and this is, a, this is a late 40s dress, we can start to see the use of so much more fabric. So this one in particular is kind of late 40s, early 50s one, but you can see in complete contrast to how little kind of fabric we've got here in this garment. Um, and then you kind of like drop the length a bit more and you can just see we start really kind of like seeing back into the back into the early 50s again um, with these fantastic shapes and when we look at uh, what's really interesting about this is the fact that the pattern cutting because this isn't even this skirt isn't pleated as we'd expect it to be the actual the actual full cut of the cloth is enormous so it would have actually been quite expensive to cut it from cut it like that because there's actually a lot of um a lot of wastage in the way that that's cut so you know we kind of women were really really excited i think um, towards the end of the war uh, towards the end of the 40s and um, just to be able to kind of like wear a, a lot more fabric in their dresses um so that's everything that we've got for the 40s uh, and i hope you enjoyed our little history lesson